The England squad has been announced and in this video I'm going to give my reaction to Gareth Southgate's picks but also the people ha that he has left out. So starting off with that, he has left out Fraser Forster, Tyreek Mitchell, Mings, Carl Walker-Peters, Jordan Henderson, Ollie Watkins and Luke Shaw and the players he has brought in. The main ones being Jared Bowen, James Justin and Tomori and Trippier to an extent. So my, my reaction is... I can understand why Fraser Forster has been left out because Southampton recently have been really, really poor and actually McCarthy's played a couple of games for them. So I can understand why Forster has been left out. Similar reason to Carl Walker-Peters, although I don't think his form has dipped as much as maybe some of the other Southampton players. But it's just that there's so much competition at right back. Trent is back in the England team. You've got Carl Walker there who's just won the league with Man City. And then you've got Kieran Trippier, who's back from injury. So there's just so much competition at right back. It was always going to be hard for Carl Walker-Peters to maintain his spot. But I don't think his form has necessarily dipped that much. And I definitely think he should be in England contention in other squads to come. Unlike maybe someone like Fraser Forster, who I'm not sure he's going to hit the heights that he did a couple of months ago. Also, Tyreek Mitchell is out. And in my opinion, I'm not sure about that decision. I still think England have got questionable options at left back. The main ones I can think of are Luke Shaw and Chilwell. And Luke Shaw's not in this England team. And Chilwell's only just come back from injury. So Tyreek Mitchell being left out is a bit surprising. His replacement in many ways is James Justin, who has come back from injury in recent weeks and has performed relatively well for Leicester. I like the fact that James Justin's in because it's good to have different options at fullback. And James Justin can play at left back and right back, which is fantastic. And James Justin was playing so well for Leicester before his horrific injury that has kept him out what seemingly has been like a year. So James Justin coming back into the team, I can understand that. But Tyreek Mitchell being left out is a little bit questionable in my opinion. Jordan Henderson's not in the team. I mean, I don't think he's injured because he's playing for Liverpool. So that's a little bit confusing. I guess it gives a chance for, well, potentially someone like Bowen, although they do play in different positions. Maybe Conor Gallagher and Bellingham will get more game time, but Henderson being left out is a little bit confusing. And then Ollie Watkins is out, and I guess his replacement is Tammy Abraham. You cannot deny that Tammy Abraham deserves a place in the England team. He has 17 goals and four assists in 37 games for Roma. He's been absolutely phenomenal and crucial for Roma this season. Ollie Watkins... He has been in somewhat okay form in a couple of games, although he did miss quite a few chances in the Man City game. Having said that, Ollie Watkins maybe hasn't quite done quite enough to earn his place in the England team. So coming in, we've got Jared Bowen, who's fully deserved. He's been brilliant for West Ham this season, arguably their <laughs> hammer of the season. So Bowen definitely deserves a place. I can understand the thinking behind James Justin. In my opinion, maybe he should have played a few more games before being called up. But I guess the fact that Luke Shaw and Chilwell won't be in this England squad means that James Justin kind of needs to get involved, which is good for him and it's good to see someone different getting game time. Although that just further highlights why I think Tyree Mitchell should be in because Luke Shaw and Chilwell aren't. Anyway, Kieran Trippi is back in the team and I can see him actually starting at left back in a few games for England. And then we've got Tamori, who's fully earned his call up. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I've watched... Tomori in Italy and to be fair Tammy Abraham in Italy but the stats do back up Tomori with the fact that AC Milan have just won the league and they've just they've only conceded 20 goals in Tomori's 30 starts in the league which is phenomenal and also AC Milan's win percentage drops from 75% to 50% when Tomori's not in the team which is pretty significant so Tamori being in the England team, that's a big boost. I definitely think that's fully deserved. On Based on those stats, of course, I haven't watched him play, but given that AC Milan have just won the league and Tamori has started 30 games for AC Milan, it's kind of sensible and reasonable to understand why Tamori's in the team. Other absentees that aren't involved in England, Emil Smith-Rowe, I can understand that because 
Yes, he's a young player, he's got a lot of potential, and at times he's been great for Arsenal, but in recent weeks he hasn't been consistent enough, and he's not even been playing. It's normally been Martinelli, Saka and Odegaard that have been playing, not Emil Smith-Rowe. So I can understand why he's not involved. Dominic Calvert-Lewin has only just come back from a long-term injury. But then these two, you could make a debate for them. Eric Dyer. Now, a lot of people like to hate on Eric Dyer, but there's no denying that his recent form has been really good for Spurs. Yes, Ben Davis and Christian Romero have been even better than Dyer in recent weeks, especially Romero. But Dyer has been performing well. And given that England might play a three at the back formation, because against Switzerland, England played three at the back, you do have to suspect whether Dyer should be in over the likes of perhaps Connor Cody. So, he's out. And also, James Madison is out. And in recent weeks, Madison has been phenomenal, been really important for Leicester. He won their players' support, sorry, he won the supporters' player of the season, which shows his influence on the team. You could make a case that Madison should have been involved in the England squad, but alas, he is not. And overall, the squad. I do agree with the majority of decisions. I'm very excited to see how the likes of Jared Bowen and Tomori get on involved. Because England are playing four games now in this block, there's plenty of opportunities for the likes of Mark Gahey and Jared Bowen to get involved. So that's really exciting. Also, a midfield potentially involving Jude Bellingham, Conor Gallagher and Declan Rice is very, very exciting. So I cannot wait to... Analyse the England team and their games and I just hope that all the England players get plenty of game time. So thank you for watching this quick little England review video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you all later.